because his point of view, like from a player's point of view, right? And he'll speak on it from player and coaching. Both sides of it. He'll speak from the players. And that's why it was very refreshing to see him check Stephen A. Smith a few times <laughs> when Stephen A. was talking nonsense. And, and JJ is probably the only one that would do that, right? You know, it was JJ. <laughs> it was JJ Reddick. They came up with the whole. The reason why people are saying that they were plumbers back then, because that's what JJ said. I know what I did, you know. And I'm thinking, if my memory serves me well, JJ uh, Jared West kind of implied that if I was still younger, I would cook him. You know, Reddick inspired that type of response, even from the legends of the NBA. You know, right? Bartrin, Bartrin, Bartrin the world. Peace, peace, peace. This is Chief Bartrand. Bartrandize the world. This is the BTW Network. This is uh, Drive Sports uh, Media. This is the Drive Buzz podcast and stream. And this is the uh, <laughs> Jeff the Chef series. I, I forget what part it is. Two or three, I think, or four. You know, something like that. But because uh, <laughs> Jeff the Chef, Jeff the Chef series, you know, and um, hit the like button on the way in. Um, be sure you do that. Um, comment, share this, subscribe if you haven't. You know, you really mess with this content. You know what I'm saying? If you really do, Cash App, Bartronize TW is the Cash App. PayPal.me, Bartronize TW is the PayPal. If you wish to support the network, and I urge you to do so, I'm always going to ask for support. You know, is, is you know, yeah, support the network, help it grow. As you can see, the network is continuing to grow, and Tribe Sports is you know, the Tribe Sports channel is continuing to evolve because I'm opening it up. Uh, especially around the playoffs and everything, you know, this is a sports channel. I'm going to open it up, you know. I have two of my favorite teams I like to cover, which is the Hornets and now the Bulls, which that content should be dropping soon. If it hasn't dropped already, just depending on the order of the content, this probably will drop before it. I'm going to, this content I'm making now is probably going to leap past a lot of the other content I've made already. There's like three or four pieces of Tribe Sports Media content I've made already that <laughs> I just, you know, I just haven't had the time to put, get it, put it together and put it up, man. I'm hoping that the content isn't too dated when I put it out. You know, I got LaMelo Ball, Brandon Miller content. I got some Bulls content. So that I got some um, some more Angel Reese content. You know, to, to, I got some more Angel Reese content. They did a press conference after she was picked by the Chicago Sky. I still knew, I still want to respond to uh, to Angel Reese. Death Angel Reese is what I call her. And Killer Camilla. Who the hell is this calling me? Wait a minute. Let me see. Nah, baby. I'm making content right now. Content, baby. Uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh-huh. 
Let me put this thing on silent. It happens, right? So, <laughs> yes, anyway, so, um, back to what I was talking about. This is about JJ Reddit. <laughs> the controversial JJ Reddit. <laughs> now, full disclosure, you know, I, I like JJ's podcast. I do. JJ, in my opinion, got one of the best pods out there. The best, one of the best pods out there. You know, I love his takes. I love them. Because his point of view, like from a player's point of view, right, and he'll speak on it from player and coaching. Both sides of it. He'll speak from the players, and that's why it was very refreshing to see him check Stephen A. Smith a few times <laughs> when Stephen A. was talking nonsense. And, and JJ's probably the only one that would do that, right? You know, it was JJ, <laughs> it was JJ Reddit that came up with the whole, the reason why people are saying that they were plumbers back then, because that's what JJ said. JJ Reddick said that, made that take, and it stuck, you know? compared to today's players and today's skill, it got to the point where Jerry West, <laughs> one of the gods of basketball, Jerry West spoke directly to JJ. And he said, what did he do in his career? <laughs> I know what I did, you know? And I'm thinking if my memory serves me well, JJ, uh, Jerry West kind of implied that if I was still younger, I would cook him, you know? So here, JJ Redick inspired that type of response even from the legends of the NBA. You know, right? So you can call him snarky. He is. JJ Reddick has a personality and a persona that make you want to punch him in the face. I get it. I absolutely get it. You know, so called white boys with that type of aura, they generate that type of thing, even from their own tribe. <laughs> JJ Reddick is not universally loved at all. In some areas, he is. Especially in Carolinas, he's, he's from Duke, which I'm gonna get to in just a minute. So I understand the, <laughs> I understand the, <laughs> I understand the, I understand the strong feelings when it comes to JJ Reddick, especially now that there's talk that he may become an NBA head coach for the Charlotte Hornets. I get it. And because I'm covering the Hornets, I have an interesting, I have a, um, I have an interest in this because I have been covering Hornets for at least five years now. And there are other Hornets faithful who have been Hornets faithful forever. I'm listening to Hornets Twitter or Hornets X weigh in on it with great division within the fan base on whether JJ should be the coach or not. Some are saying that the Hornets don't have time for no experiments. <laughs> this ain't the time for no goddamn experiments. Experience. Go and pay the money and get Bud Budenholzer and bring him in. Let him pay them, you know, pay Bud the money and bring him in. You know what I'm saying? You know, that'll tell me that this franchise is serious, blah, 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 blah. You know, so there are people who are on that. And I don't necessarily disagree with that sentiment. Not necessarily. You know, because Bud, do, Bud does have connections with Snow and Jeff Peterson from their time in Atlanta. And Bud uh, Budenholzer did a good job in Atlanta. You know, took Atlanta to 60 games, the best season they've had. Well, before, um, you know, Trey did that um, finals a few years ago. But, you know, that was a very good team. They just ran to LeBron. It is what it is. And then they got a championship in Milwaukee. Although, Budenholzer's tenure was very shaky around that time because there's a talk of moving on from Budenholzer because he can he he can only get the team to so to a, you know so far and not take the team over. You know, I think he did a stint in Philadelphia, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he was in Philadelphia too. You know, when that team, I think that's when Jimmy Butler's that Jimmy Butler and that's when they had been I mean, so yeah, he did. Bud was there in Philadelphia when they had that hell of a team in Philadelphia and Kawhi ended that thing. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken, hey, jump in the chat. Um, against Nurse, huh, ironically, who's the Phillies coach now. That's interesting how that goes. So, and he got a he got a ring in Milwaukee, and that ring extended Budenholzer's t 
tenure in Milwaukee, but eventually they let him go. Because mostly, mostly coaches shelf life, uh, the shelf life of a coach, unless you're a Popovich, most times coaches get two, <laughs> coaches will get two to five years to kind of make their mark and then they'll let go. That's just how it goes. That's the nature of coaching, right? So I get why Mike Budenholzer would be one. You just get, just get, just get Bud. He's out there, you know. It's interesting that he hasn't landed another job with anybody else. But just go get Budenholzer. He has a certain pedigree. He's been the coach of the year. Blah, blah. He has all the he has all these things that could justify him, you know, becoming the coach. But Bud's asking price is high. That's what the rumors are that Budenholzer's asking price is high right now. So. Maybe Bud has priced himself out of small market teams, right? Who, hey, I have to remind everybody, the Hornets is a small market team. And they are in the process of re, <laughs> they are doing a fixer upper job for the Hornets right now, everybody, right? There's only so much money to go around. It is what it is. They don't have, an unli they don't have unlimited money at all. Jordan left the house a mess. It is what it is. They're reimagining a lot of things, right? That's a lot of money, baby. So if they're going to concentrate all their resources on Mike Budenholzer, that takes away from the practice facility. That takes away from upgrading the training staff. That takes away from other projects that they may prioritize, that are of high priority. You know, if they're going to build the premier franchise, they kind of have to prioritize player amenities, fan amenities. They have to do things like that. You know, the experience going in, going into the in and out of the Spectrum Center. Those things have to be prioritized. The PR, you know, the, the, the whole vibe of the Hornets. They are in the process of changing that around. And that costs money. So I said myself, I didn't want to retread. I understand why Mike would be hired, but me, I said, I don't want to retread. I don't want the coaching carousel. I don't want them to pick from the coaching carousel. I want them to grab somebody that's hungry and put them there. You know, now I was of the mindset of like a Sam Cassell. I was of the mindset of someone like that, you know, Kevin Ali, but well, well Ali may be in, um, Ali may be in um, Brooklyn now. They may keep Ali there. They may keep Kevin Ali in Brooklyn. It depends, you know. But no, 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 they don't. They just got um Kevin Ali's out. They just got Fernandez. That's right. Fernandez is in Brooklyn, I believe. Yep, Fernandez is in Brooklyn, right? So some of the coaches that were out there that were potential candidates for Charlotte are now being taken, right? You know, you got Charles Lee up in Boston, you know, who also has a relationship with Jeff, right? But it's like, okay, um, but he's in Boston. They are busy in the playoffs looking to win a championship. Do the Charlotte Hornets have time to wait on Charles Lee? That's the question. If Charles is not gonna say to Boston, hey, y'all can do it without me, I got to come down here. Cause Jeff left. Jeff didn't tell Brooklyn, hey, Jeff didn't tell Charlotte, wait until the end of the season to not come. No, Jeff said, let's go. So if Charles is not willing to do what Jeff did and the Boston Celtics, more than likely, looking at how things are looking right now, the Celtics look like they'll get out of the East, which means a deep playoff run into June with the draft, with workouts going on, with drafts going on. You don't, you know, the philosophy, the, the system is not even being put in place to see who they're gonna draft, what will be a fit according to what the coach has said they will build around the mellow ball and Brandon Miller, you know, Mark Williams. If that's not in place, then you're going into the draft blind. You understand what I'm saying? So the Hornets cannot afford to wait either. They can't wait on Charles. So Charles Lee has to make a decision. Leave, hey, and build or stay in Boston and let someone else get the job. So, like I said, you know, Kevin Ali, he's you no, know, there's Ali, there's some other ones. There's Cassell, you know, 
coaches who've been on benches around Tyron Lue, Doc Rivers, other assistant coaches that have been there, right? Talks about, you know, talks about getting, well, maybe getting a female, right? Getting a female coach, right? And that's, there was talk about uh, the sister from the G League. I forget my sister's name, I apologize, right? You know, and I said, in my live stream, I said, as long as I know damn Becky Hammond, I'm good. You know, it's like, if you're gonna get a woman, you know, you know, let let us let us not let us let us, let this not be some woke ass project. Let it be someone who those players will respect. And I said, well, hell, you get Teresa Witherspoon. I was speaking on uh, Teresa. I said, well, shit, if you're gonna get a woman, get Teresa. She's been in those circles. NBA players, Zion, and some of the players in New Orleans glow about her. Glow about Teresa Witherspoon. The only reason why Zion is even shooting a jumper. <laughs> it's because of Teresa Witherspoon. Because she put a foot in his ass and told him, you got to shoot some jump shots, baby. She worked with him on that. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, 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 Teresa Witherspoon is in Chicago Sky Culture, Angel Reese, and Killer Camilla. So it's like, oh, no, no, Teresa, stay where you are. Stay where you are, Teresa. Stay where you are. Cause you, cause Teresa's gonna be a good ass coach. I'm gonna do a whole separate, I'm gonna do a whole separate stream on that. I'm gonna build right off of this into a whole separate uh, damn pod on Teresa. What Teresa will bring to the table to help Angel Reese and Camilla. I love it. I love that combination. Tough. Teresa's tough. She's yo. Ugh, ugh. Anyway, that's a, that's another conversation. You know. So. I wanted them to go young and dynamic and I wanted them to think out the box. That's what I'm saying. I didn't want them to go the traditional way and it seems like, and I said this in the previous, I said this in the previous pod. I don't know if I said it on my live or on some other content. <laughs> Cause I've been doing so much man, but I've been making content as I go. I like Rick Snall's approach. I like his approach. I think, oh no, I said it on um, Flight Sports cause we talked about JJ Reddick on Flight Sports. I'm talking, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more. I like the fact that Rick Snall, Gabe Plotkin, these are basketball guys, right? They've been in basketball circles. They've, you know what I'm saying? They are basketball guys, you know? So they have a different energy than a Mark Cuban or a, um, or like Mr. Bomber, right? Yeah, or yeah, like I said, or a Bomber, right? Or like, even the Bensons in New Orleans, you know, or some of the other ones. They're there, they're there to make money, yes. You know, even like the rhyme stores in Chicago. They're, but they're not basketball guys. You know what I'm saying? They're not basketball guys. That's why they, those people, the wise ones like Balmer, you know, and Cuban, uh, Cuban, yeah, I'm gonna have to do the whole thing on Cuban and Dallas, that whole thing. Bomber is wise enough to know he's not a basketball guy, so he hires basketball guys to run his front office. You know, which is why the Clippers have been built the way they are built, because these are basketball guys, and Bomber has the money to spend to make it happen, as long as it makes sense to him. That's what he said in the interview with Paul George. He said, um, I'm not a basketball guy. You know, so that's why I have them around. And so when we meet, we discuss, they bring out what, you know, what, you know, I, you know, he lays out his overall vision and then they say, okay, this, that, and the other. We keep Kawhi, we get Paul George, this, that, and the other. So it's like, okay. Then they put the team together and Bama trusts their judgment in it and he pays the money out. Mark Cuban is different. You know, Mark think he knows. And Mark, I think that's one of the best gonna be, um, Eventually, that's going to be his downfall because Mark Cuban thinks he knows, and we, even when he sold the team, he want to keep basketball. He wants to, he he still want to make basketball decisions. No, get the fuck out, man! You don't know basketball like that. You know what I'm saying? He gonna run Luca to the all. All Mark Cuban is gonna do is run Luca into the ground. That's all he's gonna do. He's gonna run Luca into the ground. It's nice to see the numbers. Oh, MVP, it's nice to see a Slovenian whooping Americans' asses. That's nice. But he's going to run Luke into the ground. I'm going to do another pod on that as well. Oh, yeah. I got some content, baby. We It's flowing right now. It's flowing from the survival scrolls, right? I might be, hell, tonight I'm, quite, I'm probably going to prepare both of those pieces if I remember, if I still got the spirit to do so. Anyway, I said repeatedly, I want them, I don't want no old coaches coaching the Hornets. I don't. I want a young, dynamic coach to go with that dynamic executive of, of basketball ops, executive VP of basketball ops, Jeff P. 
is. I want them to go young, I want them to go dynamic, and I want them to go outside the box. I don't want the same circle. I want them to go outside the box and get somebody who is hungry. A coach who is hungry and he himself or herself got something to prove. They're not coming there as a prep, prep project. They're not coming there as some pet project for them. No, they're coming there, number one, because they believe they can do it. And they have a chip on their shoulder. There is no better person to fit that description than J.J. Reddick. <laughs> I, there are things about J.J. I cannot stand. I, I'm with y'all on it, man. I'm with y'all. But this, he did, a, he did a thing. He was talking about the Clippers versus um he was doing a he was doing his response to the playoffs and i've been listening because it's like since he came on the radar charlotte uh, okay i'm gonna listen more closely to his basketball knowledge now and the things he was talking about you know about the refs and about you know different players and you know how joel and b you know has, has how his play connected to tyrese maxi how joel and b's presence helps tyrese maxi i'm saying i'm thinking i said well damn I'm saying, well, hell, he can translate that over to LaMelo Ball and Mark Williams. The way he was talking about Maxi and Embiid, I said, oh, shit, that's LaMelo and Mark Williams. That's how I'm starting to look at it. And, you know, publicly, he has never, never, he has never talked LaMelo down publicly, ever. He talks LaMelo up. Every time he talks on LaMelo Ball, he talks him up. He has all but called, <laughs> he is all but called uh, uh, Brandon Miller a goddamn legend already. Now, if the coach, if you bring in a coach that believes in the two cornerstones of the team and he believes in them as they are, then will J.J. Reddick be able to build a system around LaMelo Ball and Brandon Miller? Because that's why he'll be there. And that's why he'll take the job, because what he's already kind of let the cat out the bag in terms of how he sees both of them. That's what you want. You don't want the, the issue I have, particularly with Borrego, was that Borrego tried to turn LaMelo down. Borrego, at, at Mitch's behest, was trying to turn LaMelo into this other thing. LaMelo is a maverick point guard. He is not no traditional point guard. He is not a Tyrese Halliburton type point guard. He is not a Chris Paul. He is a maverick point guard. He is actually more in the vein of Luka Doncic than those guys, because Luka is not a traditional point guard. Luka is a dynamic point. That's what he is. LaMelo is in that same energy, except as Grant Williams say, LaMelo isn't the scorer as Luca is, but he doesn't have to be. Especially now that you got Brandon Miller. Brandon Miller can be the scorer. LaMelo Ball can be the all-around player, the all-around engine that makes that team go. He doesn't have to be the leading scorer. And I don't want him to be. <laughs> no, I want him to put up good numbers. You know, but the leading scorer next year should be Brandon Miller. It should be. Brandon Miller should be the one to be the leading scorer. Now, being the leading scorer and being the one that closed the games are two different things. LaMelo Ball is the closer, you know, but Brandon can cook for three quarters and then him and LaMelo can cook at the end of the game, depending on, you know, the game. LaMelo can bring it home, you know? That's kind of what I see, right? I think that's the best combination for those two, that we get the best out of both of them, you know? And LaMelo can pick his spots throughout the three quarters and then close it out, which is how LaVar trained them anyway. LaVar trained them to get everybody um, involved early on and then the fourth quarter is your quarter, LaMelo. That's what he's always trained. He's always trained his son that way, right? So, J.J. Reddick has just enough arrogance. <laughs> he has just enough of a chip on his shoulder, because he does. He has just enough hunger and arrogance to say, I will do this. And he's been looking for a job anyway. He's been interviewed before. I found out he was interviewed before for a few of the jobs that he turned down, right? He said, I can do this. <laughs> and he has the knowledge he can connect with the players i believe that some people say lamella ain't gonna listen to to jj reddick oh he will he will brandon miller no they will because they he he'll because brand because jj ain't gonna be you know jj you know they they there are people who want they there are people who believe that lamella needs a coach that'll crack the whip i've heard that you know, as long as he holds the mellow accountable, they need a cracking the whip type coach. That ain't gonna be JJ Reddick. JJ will do it, but he's gonna do it in a way because he understands today's player. You don't get no, you know, you understand today's player. Although, even with Steve Clifford, he was direct. 
you know, I got some few stories about Steve, you know, basically telling Grant Williams to shut the fuck up, you know, basically, you know, so that'll be there. It ain't, he ain't gonna be no softy around those guys. He will tell them, oh, shit, this shit, shut the fuck up. Look at this, man, look at what you, you know, JJ will tell it because you can even identify, like, even his discussions with LeBron on, like, plays that are ran, it's like, in, 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 you know, he just, JJ is simply picking, see, this is what, mm, they pick, JJ is literally picking LeBron's brain as he's about to coach. Ah, 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 it's crazy. And adding that to his repertoire, right? You know, JJ is high risk. He is. Because this shit could blow, if they pick up JJ, it could blow up in the hornet's face. It could. It could. It could go very badly for Jeff Peterson if this is his first move as a coach. Or it could say that Jeff is bold. Jeff is bold enough to do that. He's bold enough to go and pick somebody that nobody else apparently think is really good coaching material. Say, no, you come over here. I'm gonna make you the coach, right? You know what? So it's like, if it turns out to be the way I'm hoping it be, if J.J. Reddick can take what he talks about on these pods, which I said is the best, and bring that to the Hornets, bring that type of knowledge to the Hornets, raw. So he's gonna make mistakes. I don't expect J.J. to be perfect. He gonna make, all the coaches gonna make mistakes. Even, ju even, even the veterans have made mistakes. Come on now. We, we, we are busy talking about Doc and his mistakes every year. You know, <laughs> right? You know, even the great ones like Tyron Lue, they all made mistakes in their coaching, you know? Um, Vogel, all of them have, right? So, that'll that'll happen, but JJ could fuck around and be a steal. No, I know, hop in the comments. Hey, this is a this is a heated discussion back and forth. Hop in the comments, let me know what you think. You know, you saying, fuck JJ, it's like, nah, we ain't got time for that. Bring Bud on, pay the money. Or there are others, there are others within the fan base who are saying, bring him, bring him, get him. You know, it's like, you know, of course the, the 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 local connection is always good. The Carolina Mafia is what it is. You know, the Carolina Connect. He's Duke. You know, so a bunch of the Duke guys will love him there anyway. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, that is what it is. You know, North Carolina guys have to suck it up. That is what it is. <laughs> Duke is in the house. You know, you know, damn, he's an alum of Duke. So Mark Williams automatically. You know what I'm saying? Mark Williams is from Duke. So that's going to be an automatic thing for JJ to connect with Mark Williams, even just on that alone. Oh, he got a Duke as a coach, you know. So that might put that might put Mark in the in the birds in the in the in the in the, in the, in the you know uh, up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? There may be an investment from JJ to make sure Mark is playing well, which is important. Without Mark Williams, Charlotte ain't gonna do shit. He is the key piece. They gonna need him. They are going to need him, especially with what's, especially with what's going out on the going on in the West. If the Hornets ever get to the point where there's even a talk of a championship, Mark Williams must be there for that to happen. You know, with what's coming out the West. They cannot win. There is no team, and the teams in the East want to figure it out, man. They're going to need some big to deal with Wimby, Chet, Joker, all those, <laughs> just those guys out in the West. Gobert, they're going to need a big, they're going to need a big on the other side. They're going to. You know, anyway, um, high risk, high stakes. I said this, man. As it's high stakes in Charlotte. It is high stakes. It is a high stakes game that Rick and Gabe are playing. I like it. I like the fact that they're playing. I like the fact that they are not conservative. I like the fact that they are willing to gamble. They don't put $3 billion on the table and they're willing to gamble that shit. They're rolling the dice on $3 billion, man. Fuck all these other ones. Let me bring Jeff Peterson in here. A 36-year-old executive vice president. What? What? And then they will turn around and get JJ Reddick? <laughs> they are looking to build a whole new down. They're looking to cut a whole new fucking tree in this bitch, man. They're not there for the old old circles. They're there to build their own circle. Boah, 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 boah. So I like what they're doing. You know, I said, if they would go this route, they might as well get Rondo, they're gonna do that, because Rondo's basketball IQ is, you know, is what it is, but Rondo is not interested in coaching, though he should. 
Even JJ said it on, across from LeBron. JJ said he'll make an excellent coach. You know, and, and LeBron said, I don't know why he's not coaching. He should be, you know, because his IQ, Rondo is one of the most high IQ per people in this league. And he should get a coaching job. And hopefully once he settled down, he'll come out and coach, you know, he'll come out and coach, you know, and like Kid, Nash, and Kerr, Rondo should hop right into a head coaching thing. Hey, I know someone disagree with that. Now he should he should work his way through. Now I know there's some of us in Charlotte Faithful, some of us in the tribe, we're saying, "Oh, this is just more uh, quote unquote white privilege." And I say quote unquote not because I disbelieve in that, but quote unquote because there ain't no such thing as a white man. You know, um, I agree that JJ is getting the benefit of the doubt because he's from Duke, because you know he's of that tribe. Yes, I agree with that. I agree. He'll get he'll get a foot in. Word is, I just saw on X today. Word is, they look they may according to Shams, they may be looking to interview him twice. So JJ may have it. He may have it. You know, I'm curious to see if he'll continue. Flight told me. I asked Flight. I think I said it'd be interesting to see if Jay continues to do his podcast from a coach because it'd be the first time as a coach as an active coach. Will he still be able to do his podcast? Which would be interesting as hell if JJ is able to do a podcast. Like Paul George, if JJ is able to, around when he does what he do, that he's still able to give podcasts, even from a coach's point of view, what happened at the last game. He can be critical of himself or, you know, somewhat the team, but not all the way out there because he don't throw his players under the bus. JJ is not cut that way. I've seen that. But he'll say, in general, hey, that play that he did, we messed that up. That's on me. JJ is the type that, unlike coaches of the past, JJ is the type that I see, he would take accountability if he made a mistake on the play. He would. He, he seems like that. We said, no, nah, I should have had LaMelo do this. You know, I thought of this was over here. LaMelo said this, I, I went away, he, okay. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see if he still be able to do it. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I wouldn't be mad with a JJ Redick hire. I wouldn't be. I would, you know, I would, like I said, I would want Cassell, some other ones, but JJ, I don't think it'll be a bad hire for the Hornets. You know, if they're gonna do it like this, they might as well. <laughs> Will it translate into wins and losses? We don't know. Cause JJ may flop, but why not? It's like at this point, oh, you fucking with LaMelo's career, blah, 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 blah. They can all leave then. It's like, if it, I, I think for a LaMelo ball, Particularly LaMelo, but Brandon too. Whoever you bring in, you have to let LaMelo be free to be himself on the court. You know, while holding him to account if he goes too crazy, but you cannot contain his energy. And you may, as a coach, you may have to live with a few turnovers so that LaMelo can be himself. Cause he made sure, and LaMelo is a, <laughs> this is crazy. LaMelo is a maverick, high risk point guard. He will, he will try to make that. Other point guards won't make that pass. LaMelo will try to get that pass in there. A lot of times he's successful. You know, sometimes it's a turnover. But that's his game. It's a high risk, entertaining, high risk game that LaMelo plays. LaMelo plays a dangerous game on the court. He does. <laughs> and he likes the danger. He loves the danger of it. Right? He has owners who are now playing that same game on that level. <laughs> hey, it's what it is. You know, he has Jeff Peterson who's playing that same game on his level. And if you get a coach that's playing that same game on his level, then from LaMelo to Rick Snall, you all got high risk, risk taking, high risk taking type guys. So you may say, well, if they are doing all this, who is the one that's gonna say, hey, y'all need to stop? That's the only concern I guess I would have. It's like, okay, when, okay, y'all doing too much now. Who is there to say, who is there to say, wait, Rick, wait, Jeff, wait, JJ, wait, LaMelo. You know what I'm saying? Who's there to be that other side, right? I think Jeff will provide some of that. He said he, he wants, um, he wants a various points of views around him. So I think Jeff will help with that. But 
JJ, I think, yeah, I think he, I think he'll do, it depending on what staff JJ puts around him, which is another thing too. If they gonna turn the staff over, it can't be top heavy with Bud and Budenholzer, man, because Budenholzer is not just gonna want money for himself. Shit, he's gonna want a whole staff with him and they gonna cost. So if you take a lower cost at JJ Reddick, and then JJ is still able to pick a nice staff around him, right? That'll help him in areas where he knows he may be deficient. Then there are others that can help him, right? That JJ knows. And particularly from his Duke connections, you know, ain't no telling who he may have as his coach with him. And, you know, helping him out. You know, because the coaches who are there, I, I don't expect, uh, outside of Marlon, I expect the rest of them to be gone. I don't think they're gonna be, I don't think they're gonna be held over. I don't think, you know. Cliff was moved up, you know, or moved over. Because of Marlon's connection to LaMelo, Marlon may stay, but he may be the only one that survives. Ty Corbin, or the other ones, Patrick Ewing, they all may be gone, you know, because JJ may not need them. JJ may have his own idea of who he want to bring in. And Clifford kind of said it as I close this. Clifford kind of said it on his way out the door. He said, the coach, he said, he said, I said this to Jeff and Rick and Gabe. He said, the coach, do not handcuff the coach. Whoever y'all pick, do not handcuff him. Let him be able to pick his staff and everything. So JJ will have to pick his people and all that stuff and bring them in. Because if JJ is going to lose, he should lose with his people. You know what I'm saying? He shouldn't lose with holdovers. No, he gonna win or lose with his people. If JJ turn around, if JJ can, if his, what he puts out in his pods, which is very good, if that can translate into his coaching philosophy and setting up a system for this Hornets, it'll be crazy. And, and JJ will fuck around and be an institution in Charlotte. So get used to JJ's face. Get used to his snarky, Get used to that snarky white boy that he is. God damn it, he is. Get used to the arrogance. Get used to the smugness. Ugh. Get used to the condescension. Get used to it. Get used to the patronization. Get used to it. Get used to it. It'll be good in those presses, though. <laughs> the Charlotte, listen, if he comes to Charlotte, the Charlotte Press, the Charlotte Press, the Charlotte Press Conference, those press conferences are gonna be interesting because I'm curious to see how JJ handles the Charlotte media. Uh, and Kyle Bailey, the rest of those guys. I would've seen, because the F-150, some are not, some are lukewarm on JJ Reddick. I'm finding that out too. They're not too keen on JJ. They're not too keen on JJ Reddick. They're not, even though he's from Duke, they're not too keen on JJ. I'm noticing that. They're not pushing him. You know, they're not pushing JJ. I'm, you know, they're not. <laughs> So I find that interesting. I find that very interesting. We'll see. This has been Chief Bartram. Bartram eyes the world. This is the BTW Network. This is Tribe Sports Media. This is the Tribe Buzz stream and show and podcast. Like, hey, let me let me know what y'all think in the comment section. I expect comments to be in the comment section for this because you know, especially from the Hornets faithful and the Mellow faithful, the ball verse, you know, uh, the Mellow the Lamelo ball verse. You know, I expect certain things to be said about it. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, share this. Be sure to share this. Subscribe if you haven't. You know, support the network. Cash app, Bartronize TW. PayPal.me, Bartronize TW. I appreciate everyone for listening. And, um, you know, if you return, thank you for coming back. If it's your first time, thank you for coming through. You know, and hopefully if it's your first time, jump on and subscribe to the tribe, man, and, and be a part of this and subscribe to my other channels. I have two other channels, the Bartronize Music Channel and also the Unfit to the Bonfire. You know, uh, and, and go check those out too. You find those you like and subscribe to all three channels so we can continue to grow the network. Peace. Bartronize the world. They want to throw it in your face where the fuck you came from. And you look at the mess that they're in. Because they didn't have the discipline you had. Because they didn't dedicate themselves where you dedicated yourself to your craft. To your work. To your vision. Dreams so sweet when I do what they say. I couldn't do merchant names. I'm like, who?